Wooplast may be a very familiar name by now to many of you uh, following the Linux box market. Uh, Wooplast is a great manufacturer out of South Korea, which has seen great success with the, the previous boxes like the Wooplast Duo. Later on came the Wooplast Solo, and here in the middle of 2011, it's finally time for the Wooplast Uno. And if we dive straight into comparison mode, compared to the old Wooplast Solar Box, this of course has a front-mounted uh, display, an alpha numeric display, 12 characters in all. And that was certainly not available on the Solar Box, of course. Uh, if I flip open the front panel here, uh, it reveals two built-in card readers, uh, that is Xcrypt card readers by default. You need to install some kind of softcam software if you want to do anything else. Uh, below that we have two built-in common interface ports for usage of cam modules, of course. And here we have a front-mounted uh, USB port, very useful if you need to update firmware or transferring files very quickly. You don't have to go around the back, of course. Below the display we have the uh, adjustment buttons for volume and uh, changing the channels. And finally we have a standby button here. Turning our attention to the back side of the Wooplus Unibox, we of course have a physical on-off switch here uh, for the power. And I quite like that option being available on a box like this. We also have the built-in fan, which is a rather quiet fan, I would say. I don't think many people will complain about the noise in this Wooplus Uno. Here in the middle, we have the built-in plug-and-play tuner module. Of course, this is the DUBS2 module. Uh, you can change this, of course, into the DUBTC module, which will enable you to watch terrestrial television or cable television instead. The good old SCART connector is still there, along with analog video and analog audio output. But of course, most people will be using the HDMI port for HD resolutions like 720p or 1080i. Down here we have the external SATA connector, which will enable you to use an external SATA hard drive for, for your PVR recordings instead of perhaps using an internal hard drive. The Ethernet port is of course there, like on most Linux boxes. And down here we have the two USB ports, which adds to the one on the front. Finally, we have the digital optical output for audio and the good old RS232 port.